hello to everyone uh, in this video we'll be discussing on the topic of our origin of acquired heart defects so the meaning is that the pathologies which are which are occurring uh, after the birth okay so there can be many causes for development of this heart defects so heart disease is a pathology in which normal blood flow in the heart is disrupted so meaning is that uh, if there is any <coughs> disruption in the blood supply to the heart then there can be development of pathology now there can be four uh, four main cause or regions or four main um, other diseases which can lead to development of acquired heart defects okay so first we have is the rheumatic uh, defects or rheumatic heart disease we can say so it is found against the background of rheumatic disease uh, disease and this is about 80% cases we see this rheumatic disease in 80% cases there are development of heart defects so it is an autoimmune uh, inflammatory pathology in which human immune system attacks the tissues of its own uh, joints muscles and internal organs including lungs heart nervous system kidney skin and even eyes so uh, the meaning is that is an autoimmune pathology which is called as rheumatic disease in which there is a uh, attack of the tissues of our own body the immune system our own immune system attacks attacks our own uh, tissues and joints muscles and internal organs and because of that this leads to development of uh, other uh, respective organ pathology so in this we have the chronic rheumatic heart disease and rheumatic fever okay so this will uh, take special uh, special place here okay and chronic uh, uh, rheumatic heart disease is life threatening disease but which result from damage of heart valves so actually in this uh, type of rheumatic disease there is damage of our heart walls actually in the case of heart diseases okay and which is caused by episodes of rheumatic fevers so i can show you one image here uh, in which you can see mitral valve is damaged so in this image you can see there are numerous uh, small rheumatic vegetation of line uh, in the closure you can see this 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 points this this area this depositions you can see so this are actually your uh, small rheumatic vegetation near the mitral valve and uh, with recurrent rheumatic fever uh, there can be small lesions in this uh, valve and development of fi fibr uh, fibrotic tissues and uh, further calcification chronic degeneration of this valves in the case of mitral stenosis okay so this is the example of our bacteria uh, that is our rheumatic heart disease okay so this you can see in this in response to uh, this there is introduction of infection which is called as streptococcal pharyngitis so there are some infections in the upper respiratory tracts that are called as uh, streptococcal pharyngitis okay in this rheumatic defect so basic is that uh, the rheumatic heart disease leads to development of the valvular diseases okay now second cause which can be our atherosclerotic causes that is the most common cause for the development of heart diseases it is an inflammatory disease of arteries actually so arteries are damaged here actually in the heart we have coronary arteries so coronary arteries will be damaged here and there are characteristic changes we can see such as lipid and fibrous tissue under the lining of vessels so inner lining of vessel we can see the plaques that are uh, formed from lipids or the cholesterol you can say this is a cholesterol deposition excess cholesterol in the body leads to the, the deposition of lipids in the vessels and that can lead to the uh, development of atheros atherosclerotic plaque so the condition is called as atherosclerotic plaque now this plaque uh, leads to the narrowing of arteries so because of that there is a narrowing of artery in the uh, blood, uh, artery of the heart and which can lead to decrease in the normal blood flow so there can be disruption of the blood supply to the heart and which can lead to uh, decrease of oxygen to the tissues and organs inside the heart and lead to development of ischemia in that region okay so causes for this atherosclerotic we have like over overweight obesity we can see the person who has uh, high, high high weight okay smoking uh, frequent smokers and use of oral contraceptives in females and low physical activity so who are have stationary lifestyle okay sedentary lifestyle so they have development of this type of heart uh, cause now in atherosclerosis you can see atherosclerosis so in this image you can see this is normal blood vessel okay atherosclerotic there can be plaque builds up on your vessel wall and the blood flow is reduced okay and further plaque completely occludes the vessel and blood flow is blocked so if very major type of atherosclerosis there then there can be permanent stoppage of blood flow and in this is a mild mild not mild moderate it can 
uh, slowly your chronic stage uh, develop chronic stage and chronic stage can develop lead to heart attack because of disruption of blood supply okay so you can see this heart attack how heart attack occurs so if there is no blood supply there can be the death of the heart muscles these are the healthy heart muscles these are the death of the heart muscles okay so because of cholesterol plaque build up here uh, blood clot blocks the artery okay and because of blood uh, blood clot and plaques there is permanent disruption of the blood supply in the heart and it can lead to the heart attack okay now decrease of the blood flow to the brain there can be development of cerebral ischemia also like the ischemia in the heart there can be also development of uh, brain ischemia okay in coronary artery it is there is a plaque and there is a pain in the heart on physical activity if there is any plaque uh, starting of the plaque then the person can feel pain on the exertion or some physical activity okay and when uh, he or she will come to the rest position then pain will be gone okay goes away on the rest as i have written now if this plaque burst then can lead to the block of vessel and death of the heart muscle and this death of the heart muscle can lead to the uh, pathology which is called as heart attack or sometime death of the patient now after this attack there can be changes in the heart shape and chambers due to the compensation mechanism of the heart like vent uh, ventricular like hypertrophy of the chambers okay and valve cuffs uh, are not able to prevent backflow because of the wide widening of the valve cuffs uh, valve cuffs and this can lead to the acquired heart defect further in valves there can be calcification after in chronic and later stages of development of after heart attack there can be deposition of the calcification in the aortic heart valve we can see calcification deposition okay so these are the uh, things we will see in this case okay so in this diagram you can also see i have one more so this is you can see the normal valve we have i mean any if any valve stenosis is there so their valve will be narrow close and open okay so heart valve has four valve as you know the tissue flaps that open and close as the heart beats okay if there is any abnormality calcification deposition then there can be a decrease of backflow of the blood blood will be not supply to respective chambers equally and because of that there can be uh, the heart has to do hard work to pump the blood to the other chamber and because of that the valve will be weakened so valve will become weak okay so this is the pathologies you will see in the heart one more image you can see also this is your heart and this is your diseased valve this is your healthy valve this is diseased valve and this is artificial valve artificial valve you can see it here okay clear <coughs> now we have the uh, th third type of region we uh, reason we can is endocarditis uh, that is a result of inflammation of inner lining of the heart okay endocarditis is usually divided into non infectious and infectious uh, because of infection or non infection so more often is we have non infectious type okay and this uh, uh, pathology often affects the valvular apparatus which can lead to acquired heart diseases okay acquired heart diseases now classification we have infective endocarditis we have acute we have sub acute and chronic now acute occurs suddenly instantly it occurs and can lead to life threatening diseases or death also and sub acute and chronic progress slowly in over a period of time several weeks to several months so it takes a long period okay of development of this disease and this infective endocarditis occurs due to bacterial infections if you have not a proper hygiene poor hygiene okay po poor oral hygiene that can lead to bacterial infection and further infection in your endocarditis that is a inner lining of your heart now people uh, people who have valve surgeries are more prone to bacterial endocarditis who are have done with the heart transplants at higher risk of infections symptoms you can see like patient can come with fever chills heart palpitations you can see or uh, feel night sweats in night there will be sweating there can be joint muscle pain and persistent cough so this you can see in acute and chronic both but in chronic if we go for the blood test there will be a level of decrease in the low rbc red blood cells will be decreased okay so this are the you can see in the endocarditis now endocarditis this is a bacterial endocarditis you can see this is a mitral valve here and this is a aortic valve so this development of your calcification of the bacterial endocarditis okay now <clears throat> now we have syphilis caused by treponema pallidum and std infections okay now syphilis can also lead in later stages the development of acquired heart disease so syphilis syphilis is caused by treponema pallidum and it is a sexually transmitted disease and characterized by firstly with skin lesions 
pathology of internal organs including acquired heart defects and further can lead to aortic insufficiency in later stages calcification and weakening of your aortic valves in the late stages of cephalus you can cephalus you can see so these are the four main pathologies you can see now what you can do to prevent your acquired heart defects okay first you the person should stop smoking excessive alcohol consumption should be stopped engage in physical activity go for the physical activity at least for 30 to 60 minutes in a day control your body weight okay who have higher body weight healthy cholesterol level should maintain eat healthy for that control your blood pressure it can also lead to atherosclerosis stress take less stress manage your stress and regular your health screening so at regular intervals do the health checkup from your doctors okay so these are your the, uh, the four main causes as i told you the first one is rheumatic heart disease second is your atherosclerotic atherosclerosis third one is your endocarditis fourth one is your syphilis okay so this was your origin of your acquired heart defects thank you